How's it going guys? It's Kay Cars, and today we are finally cleaning out my Dodge Challenger scat pack that we got recovered from being stolen. So if you guys haven't seen my video where I talk about the full story in detail of how this car got stolen and recovered, definitely go check that video out. I'm going to link that down in the description below. So for those of you who didn't see my video talking about the full story of what actually happened to the car when it got stolen, I want to give you guys a quick overview here and kind of bring you guys up to speed. So basically the car was stolen and it got recovered probably around three days after it was actually stolen. So again, super lucky that we actually got it back in this condition and you know, there isn't too much damage, but I will show you guys what actually happened to the car. Right here on the passenger side fender is basically the biggest piece of exterior damage that was done to the car. So as you can see, it's pretty much just a, you know, it's not a huge dent, but it definitely is very noticeable. So this basically just happened whenever the thief was backing the car out of the parking spot. And there's a huge column on the passenger side and they literally just like turned straight into the column. So I guess they just didn't see it or something like that. But that definitely is a very noticeable piece of damage right there. So luckily that is the only piece of exterior damage. Whenever they actually hit the column on the side of the parking spot there, of course they did hit the fender right here, but they also hit the wheel. There are, you know, they hit it with the tire. So Whenever I looked at the car from the side, it kind of looked like it had some more camber than I'm used to. I'm really sure if it's going to come out on camera or if it actually does have some more negative camber here. But yeah, it's really hard to tell here just by looking at it. But maybe we can get a front view here. Yeah, kind of hard to tell, but definitely let me know down in the comments if you guys think this is kind of like unusual camber. Because for me, it definitely does look like it did gain some negative camber here. The thief actually broke the passenger side window to get into the car, but they actually did replace the passenger side window. So I didn't actually have to worry about replacing it myself because whenever I got the car back, the passenger side window was already replaced. So I guess they just smashed the passenger side window, uh, left a bunch of broken glass on the inside, and then replaced the passenger side window immediately. I guess just so it wouldn't look too, I guess, suspicious. So. It definitely does look like a fishbowl right now because there's no tint on this one. The driver's side window has 35% tint, so there is a pretty good difference between driver and passenger side windows. But once again, I am pretty lucky that, you know, I don't actually have to worry about replacing the passenger side window on my own. As for the rest of the car on the outside here, it really isn't too bad. There's really no actual damage, but it is pretty filthy because, you know, I haven't really washed it in honestly months. You know, haven't washed it ever since I got the car back here. You can see it is very dirty there on the outside. You can see all that dirt that's on the outside right there on the paint. See all the dirt that's right there as well. Now, luckily this car is ceramic coated, so all that stuff should come off super easily. So we're definitely gonna be washing the outside as well, but this video is gonna be all about the inside. Just the thief actually smashed the passenger side window to get into the car. Of course, as you would expect, there is a bunch of broken glass on the interior of the car. Now, I do suspect that the thief actually cleaned out a majority of the broken glass because it's not like super covered in it. Once again, I think they just tried their best to kind of clean it up as much as they could. Just so if anybody actually saw the car, they wouldn't be too suspicious that it was stolen. So let's go ahead and hop inside here and show you guys what the interior looks like. So, you know, like I mentioned, it's really not too terrible, but I did want to give you guys a quick look here at what the inside looks like. So pretty much all this stuff here is the broken shards of glass from the window that was broken. You can see, of course, most of it is going to be on the passenger side here because obviously the passenger side window was broken. And a majority of the glass is actually behind the seat right over here. As you can see, all of that right there at the back. We do have some on the rear seat right there as well. Now you can see right there the driver's side. A little bit of broken glass right there as well. Then if we go to the driver's side floor, a little bit of broken glass right there too, but not a whole bunch. And then of course there's a little bit of leftover shards right there in the cup holder. And the thief was nice enough to give me these three screws right here. I'm honestly not really sure what these screws are from. Um, it's really hard to tell, but I'm not missing any screws, or at least I can't really tell if I'm missing anything. But also those two little circles that you see right there, those white circles, those are actually from my license plate frame that says Mopar or no car. So they actually stole that and of course stole my license plate along with that. But of course they were nice enough to leave these little um, 
circle things that are used to cover up the screws for the license plate frame. Now, these screws that are inside the cup holder, these are not actually from the license plate frame. They're a little bit too small for that. So I'm really honestly not sure what these screws are from. I don't know if maybe they're just trying to dig through the interior or something and they just had to unscrew something, but yeah, it's hard to tell. So we do have some more shards right there. And then if we look at the dash right over here, it's probably gonna be hard to actually tell on camera here, but there are a little bit of shards here, just kind of tiny pieces of glass right here on the dash. So of course we're gonna have to get all that cleaned out and one downside is that the passenger side seat right here it doesn't really like move forward and backwards because there's a bunch of shards of glass like sitting inside the rails of, that the seat slides on so if i can try to give you guys an example here kind of show you what actually happens whenever i try to actually move the seat I'll try to show you guys demonstrate it right here yeah, so I mean, I literally can't even move it at all. It's completely stuck on the glass that are on the rails right there. There we go. Yeah, so you can kind of hear that it's like, it definitely is stuck on, you know, something down there. See if I can give you guys a little more closer look at the uh, seat rails here. See if you can kind of see anything, but that'll show up on camera here, but you kind of barely just see the, you know, shards of glass that are kind of in there. Yeah, that's probably a better look right there. But yeah, like I was saying, I'm honestly super lucky that I was actually able to get the car back. And it's not any more damage than it is. Let's go ahead and actually get started with cleaning this thing out. I'm just going to be using this little vacuum cleaner right here to get all the glass out of it. And then in addition to that... We have this nice little attachment here for, you know, kind of like harder to reach areas. It has this kind of like fuzzy attachment tip right there. After we finish up with that, we're going to be using the Adams Polishes interior detailer to actually wipe down the inside. And then since I'm running pretty low on this stuff, I might honestly just try out the detail spray on the interior. So this stuff is actually meant just for the outside, like the exterior of the car just to be used on paint for the most part. But you know, if I run out of this interior detailer, I'm just gonna try to use the detail spray on the inside and see how that goes. All right, well, let's go ahead and get started. I got a majority of all the glass out of here. Of course, it was still pretty dirty here. You can see there's some more debris right there on the carpet and a little bit on the seat here as well. Right now, I think I'm just gonna switch over to one of the smaller attachments here for the vacuum, just so I can continue to get into some more of the smaller to reach areas, like the air vent and in between the seats and the dash. To be honest, it doesn't really seem like this thing's doing much, if at all, so I don't really think I'm going to be using this thing much more. Alright, so I think what I'm going to do now is I got most of the actual glass out of the passenger side with this vacuum cleaner right here. Now, just one downside of using this vacuum is that it doesn't have an actual hose, so you have to kind of carry around the entire vacuum unit right here. So it's really difficult to get this into, like, some of the harder to reach areas. So, since I got all the glass out with this vacuum, um, I'm going to go ahead and just use this other vacuum that works a little bit better and has an, an actual hose here so I can get into more of the more like hard to reach places and just do a better detailed job. So I think I'm going to save that vacuum for the passenger side. So I think right now what I'm going to do is just move over to the driver's side and get all the glass out of there. All right, so pretty much same deal here on the driver's side. Of course, a bunch of broken glass here. So you can see I got the floor mat taken out of here. So get a good look here at what this side looks like. Yeah, a little bit of less glass on this side here, since obviously the passenger window was the one that got busted. So let's go ahead and start vacuuming out all this glass right here. And once we get the glass out, 
we can switch over to the other vacuum and just do a more detailed job. So we got a majority of the glass shards out on the passenger and the driver's side here. So as you can see, there still is some debris and some, you know, small shards of glass. So I think what I'm going to do now is switch over to the other vacuum that has an actual hose, just so I can do a better job at actually like getting all the debris and everything else out of here and some of those more harder to reach areas. So let's go ahead and switch over and head back to the passenger side and start on that side as well. All right, so we have the other vacuum cleaner here. So this one's going to be a lot better for getting to those harder to reach areas just because it has an actual hose here and I don't have to carry around the whole vacuum unit to actually get to the spot that I'm trying to clean out. So I'm gonna start off by cleaning off the floor mats first, then we're gonna move on to the inside and do a better job of getting all the debris and everything else out of there. Alrighty guys, so as you can see right here, we got pretty much all the debris and all the, you know, different shards of glass out of here. Give you guys a look under the seat here. So you guys remember this place right here was all pretty basically filled with glass. And behind the rear seat here was pretty much the worst place with the most glass here. And as you can see right now, no glass left over. Same thing with the rear seat. And we also got the floor mats cleaned out as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and put these floor mats back in and then we can go ahead and do the same thing on the driver's side. All right guys, so we are all finished up with the driver's side here with the vacuum. So you can see we got all the debris out of here, everything underneath the seat, no more glass there. Go to the back here, got all the glass out of the back seat here as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the floor mats into the driver's side. Then I think the next step is gonna be to just start wiping down the interior here. I'm gonna give you guys a quick look at how much broken glass we actually got out of the car. There's a vacuum that we use to get the glass out. You can see it's, you know, it's not super full, but there definitely is a good amount of broken glass in here. You see all that. So, you know, definitely got a good amount out of the car. Really happy that we actually decided to, you know, actually do this and, you know, clean the car up because it definitely did need a good detail. So very happy with the job that we did. We're going to be using this interior detail to actually wipe down the interior get rid of any kind of stains and smudges and any kind of other debris that's on like the plastic and vinyl parts. And like I mentioned, we really don't have much of this stuff left. Another look at the driver's side here. So of course my main goal with wiping the car down is just gonna be trying to get rid of any kind of stains and anything else. So right here is a good example. Not really sure how well it's gonna show up here, but there is a pretty good amount of stains here on the plastic sill here, this black part. Now if we look at the seat here, 
there's a few stains here as well. Kind of looks like some like water might have been dripping down here on the leather. Probably gonna wipe down this whole like middle section right here. Gonna wipe down the steering wheel as well, wipe down the entire dash, and pretty much just work my way around the entire car, the entire inside of the car, and we'll see how it goes. And of course, as I expected, there's no more interior detail left in this thing. It's just barely enough, but it's not enough for the little hose here to actually pick it up. So let's go ahead and test out the detail spray and see how it does on the interior of this thing. I'm a pretty big fan of this detail spray. I've used it on the outside of the car a few times and I, I am pretty happy with it. So see if it does anything for the inside of the car. So this actually smells pretty good too, which I like about Adam's polishes. So I'm gonna start out just by wiping off the dash here. I can definitely feel that there are more shards of glass that I did not get with the vacuum. So hopefully this will kind of help to get rid of all those that are on the dash here. Now, one thing that I am pretty happy about is that, you know, I've had this car for six years now and I never actually took off the screen protector from the LCD touch screen here. So, you know, whoever took this car did not take it off either. So I'm pretty surprised about that like I said we are super lucky that I did get this car back in the condition that it is in right now because honestly I was not even expecting it to get it back at all I was kind of just expecting for it to you know kind of just be parted out or maybe they were trying to you know change the VIN number change all the VIN plates on it and kind of sell it that way well it kind of explain part of the story now you guys can definitely check out my previous video where I go over the full story about this whole situation but basically how this car was stolen is that it was parked at a public parking garage and you know it was basically just stolen from there and the way that it was found was actually kind of by accident so the police they weren't actually looking for the car at the time but basically whoever stole this car or whoever was driving it they parked it outside of an apartment building and it was parked in a reserved parking spot, but it didn't have a parking permit to park there. So it got towed. And then I guess the parking company figured out that, you know, this car was stolen. I guess maybe they just looked it up by the VIN number or something. And, you know, just figured out that it was stolen. So like I said, it all kind of happened just by accident. Like nobody was actually looking for it. And, you know, I doubt the people who called the tow truck to come get it actually knew that it was stolen. You know, they were just trying to get an, you know, unauthorized vehicle out of their parking spot that was supposed to be reserved. So, I mean, that's, you know, I'm very lucky that it actually happened this way. And whenever I got the car back, I did a full inspection and I noticed that this little dash piece right here is loose. So I'm not really sure why they were trying to take this part, like, all the way apart or what they were trying to do with that. Um, I took it kind of halfway off and didn't really notice that anything looked odd or anything, you know, just looked weird under here. Didn't notice anything like that. So I'm really not sure what they were trying to do. My best guess is that they were trying to take the car apart and just search it to see if there was like a GPS tracker on it anywhere to see if they were being tracked maybe. But, you know, I can't really think of anything else that they would have been doing underneath here. But if anybody knows, definitely let me know down in the comments because, you know, I don't think they would have had to do anything underneath this little section to actually start the car. Because another thing that I noticed whenever I got the car back is that the fuse box was open. And of course, the fuse box is in the trunk on this car. And, you know, whenever I look back there, the fuse box is just laying open. So I'm assuming they probably did something back there in order to start the car. But, you know, I don't I don't really know how all that stuff works. So I know I mentioned to you guys that this little dash piece was loose whenever I got this car back. And something else that I noticed was that this little cup holder part was pretty loose too. So basically what this is, is that if you pull this lever that's down here, it'll put the car into neutral. So I'm not really sure what they were trying to do under here. Once again, my only guess is that they might've just been searching the car for a GPS trackers just to make sure that they were not being tracked. But other than that, I really can't think of any other reason why they would have been, you know, trying to take apart the inside of the car, like taking all the panels off and, you know, basically taking apart the whole entire interior of this car. And then something else that was loose was this little panel under the steering wheel here. 
so this whole thing was loose as well so you know really not sure what they could have been doing and once again i did take it off just to check if anything looked out of the ordinary and i honestly did not see anything that looked weird so you know once again not sure what they were doing but if anybody has any kind of ideas of what they could have been doing definitely drop those down in the comment section below because i am interested to hear your thoughts on what the criminal could have been doing with this car so once again using this detail spray on the leather here seems to be working pretty well of course use it on these uh vinyl and plastic parts here too and it seems to be getting rid of all the stains here as you guys can see you got rid of the stains on the leather seat right here go ahead and do the back see how that goes yeah so the back isn't too dirty here but it is pretty dusty so i'll probably just go ahead and wipe down a little bit so i'm going to start off by wiping off the dash here and getting any more of these shards of glass off and i just noticed there's another screw up here and it's the same kind of screw that i found in the cup holder really not sure what that could have been from i don't know Maybe the tool that they used to break the window had these screws in it. I really can't think of anything else that it could have been. So it doesn't seem like there's any screws in here. I mean, this is pretty loose. Maybe they might have just tried to take this off to make sure there's no like tracking devices in it. it doesn't really seem like there's any screws that go in here though. Yeah, it's hard to tell, but it definitely is loose, so I'm really not sure what. Yeah, I mean, there's really no spots for a screw to go in there. You know, all these screws are in there, so if anybody knows what the screw is from, definitely let me know down in the comment section, because I've seen four of them in here so far. So, it's really hard to tell, but let's go ahead and continue wiping this thing down. Passenger side really isn't too bad. I'm just going to give it a quick wipe down here and call it a day. Really not many stains on this side here. Wipe down the seat here. Make sure it's all nice and clean. Alright, so now one last spot here is just going to be wiping off this door. And then we should be all finished up. A little bit of glass right here in this little vent. You can kind of hear that. Kind of hard to get it out of there, but I think we got most of it. Oh, there's a bunch of glass in there. So let me show you guys on the camera. I'm not sure if it's going to show up. Yeah, there it is. All the broken glass in there, so I'm probably just going to go ahead and vacuum that out really quick here. Alright guys, so we got the interior all detailed out. We got it vacuumed out and wiped down as well. So I wanted to give you guys a final walkthrough and show you guys how it turned out. Alright, so starting off here on the passenger side, if you guys remember, we had a whole bunch of broken glass here on the passenger side. Uh, so right there you can see we got most of it out. There's still just barely a little bit of debris left, but you know, I pretty much did my best here. Obviously I wasn't doing anything too in-depth of a detail job. But there is underneath the seat right there. See no more broken glass at all. Same thing with the seat. And if you guys remember, behind the passenger seat was the worst amount of broken glass. As you can see, absolutely nothing left. Same thing with the rear seats right here as well. Show you the driver's side there too. And I will say, the passenger side seat actually like it's able to move a little bit better now as well. So it's a lot more smooth. So if I show you guys how it moves here. You can see it moves a whole lot smoother now and I can actually like move it without like hearing a bunch of glass flying around. So that's definitely good. Of course, we got the door wiped down here as well. We got the little plastic trim here, that black door seal right there. And then if you guys remember, we did also have a bunch of like shards of glass here on the dash. 
so we got that wiped off now one thing i will say about the dash is that there are like shards of glass along the crack like where the windshield meets the actual dash right there so there are a few little shards left that i couldn't get couldn't get those with the vacuum cleaner and i couldn't get those out just like wiping it down either so that's one spot that i was not able to kind of finish up but let's go ahead and walk over to the driver's side and i can show you guys what that looks like so once again here we got the driver's side looking pretty good the floor mat is a little bit stained here just because you know it's the floor mat that gets used the most so just a little bit of stain right here in the middle part but i did vacuum it out to get all the debris and the broken glass out you can see that right there we got all the broken glass out from underneath the seat as well as out from behind the seat here as well see what that looks like as well as the rear seat right there so no more broken glass that we have to worry about of course wipe down the door right there as well give you guys a look at the interior right here so you got it looking pretty good cup holders are looking a lot better than before show you guys a full look right there at the screen as well steering wheel looking a lot cleaner and then of course we also did wipe down the dash on this side too wipe down all the interior panels here down there as well got the door seal right here looking clean got the stains out of the leather here on the seat so Overall, you know, I wasn't going for a super detailed job. I really just wanted to get all the broken glass, all the debris out, and also wanted to wipe off any kind of stains that were on the interior. And, you know, that's pretty much all I did. So I wasn't trying to, like, do anything too serious today. So I think we did a pretty good job. Got the car looking pretty good. Um, so, yeah. And then as for the exterior of the car, when it comes to the paint, you can see it definitely is very filthy. You guys can get a better view here on the front. If you can see all those bugs that are right there splattered onto the front we also have this little got a nice bug right there if you guys can see that on camera um, got a bunch of stains here on the roof don't think it's gonna come out too well on camera here but you kind of see it right there and right there and then for the rear of the car it's also pretty filthy back here as well you guys can see what that looks like here so I honestly haven't washed the exterior of this car for probably months you know, I definitely haven't washed it ever since I got it back after it got stolen. So, like I mentioned in the beginning of this video, because this car is ceramic coated, I think it's not going to be a problem to actually wash the exterior because the ceramic coating really does help a whole lot by, you know, obviously it repels water, uh, repels any kind of dirt, and it makes it a lot easier for any kind of dirt or anything on the outside to actually, like, get released from the paint but to be honest i think what i'm going to do for the exterior of this car is just run it through an automatic car wash because i don't know if you know spending a bunch of time uh hand washing it on my own taking a few hours to do that would really make much of a difference as opposed to just taking it through a automatic car wash and taking you know two minutes to do that so really don't think there would be too much of a difference just because this car is ceramic coated and after i run through the car wash you know, I can wipe off the excess water anyways myself, which I would do after hand washing it. So that's probably what I'm gonna end up doing for the exterior of the car, is just taking it through a quick car wash. I understand if you guys are super OCD car enthusiasts like myself, you're probably cringing at the idea of taking your car through an automatic car wash or anything like that and not hand washing it on your own. But I will admit the automatic touchless car washes actually are not too bad, especially if you don't go through the ones that just like actually touch your paint because those it's possible for those to actually put scratches in your car but when you go through a automatic touchless car wash you have a much lower chance of any damage actually being done to the car and me personally i think getting your car ceramic coated helps a lot and you know just taking it through a quick automatic car wash will basically do the same kind of job as long as you don't have any kind of like grit that's like seeded into the paint because if you have that and your paint's actually contaminated like that then taking it through an automatic touchless car wash will not really do much for that. If you have those kind of like, you know, grit and anything like that's inside your paint, you can't really do that with a hand wash either. You kind of have to use a clay bar to get that stuff out of it. So either way, I don't really think I have any kind of issues like that because the ceramic coating really helps out a whole lot with keeping this tar clean. 
So, you know, that's kind of my thinking for taking it through an automatic car wash instead of just hand washing it on my own. Just a quick side note about the car here is that you guys will notice I have this side skirt on the passenger side here. If we walk over to the driver's side, you'll see that it is missing from this side right here. Now this has been missing for almost the past year and I do have the replacement side skirt for the driver's side. And I think we are finally actually gonna get to installing that thing. So you guys can definitely look for a video tutorial here soon on how to install a ZL1 add-on side skirt for a Dodge Challenger Scatback. Guys, so I think that's gonna do it for this video. Like I said, I just wanted to give you guys a quick detailing video of me basically just you know cleaning up the car after getting it recovered after it was stolen so of course just wanted to clean up all the broken glass that was in the car as well as wipe down any kind of stains or any kind of dirt or debris that was also in the car so pretty happy with the end result of the car i think it looks pretty good really all it took was just a vacuum and some detail spray from adam's polishes and that's basically all it took to get the car looking to how it was before it got stolen so obviously extremely lucky that i did get the car back and it was not damaged any more than it is because I was honestly expecting to, you know, either not get the car back at all or maybe find out that it was, you know, sold for parts or completely crashed or something like that totaled. But, you know, like I said, super lucky that got it back in this condition. Like I said, if you guys want to see my full story video of me explaining in detail of what actually happened to the car, how it was stolen, what actually happened to the car, what damage happened and how it was recovered and just the full story, Make sure to go check that video out. It's on my channel. I think it was my last video that I released. And I will also link it in the description of this video as well. So that's going to do it for this video, guys. If you have any questions or comments, make sure to drop those down in the comment section below. And if you have any video suggestions for videos you would like to see in the future, also drop those down in the comment section below. And if you guys like this video or found it entertaining, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching.